uh, from today I am starting sessions on paper 5 as well since we have been doing only questions related to paper 1 uh, there has been a lot of demands by students and friends all over the world to start something else so this is the start and I am doing it from paper 5 uh, it's because uh, in paper 5 uh, there has been no universal approach to what is the correct one and what is not correct the Cambridge website also uh, Cambridge mark scheme also uh, also gives you something that is allowed not exactly according to something that's uh, that's the rule so here we are dealing with uh, paper 5 in terms of the rules not something that is allowed when we uh, focus on what is allowed uh, there might be several errors which might creep later on so I am uh, doing all these things according to what the rule is uh, beyond that it is all allowed so I am doing according to the rule so my first uh, question uh, starts from 2010 May June paper 52 and it is question number uh, 2 it says that a student is investigating how the period T so this is the time period T of a simple pendulum depends on its length L length L as shown in figure 2.1 figure 2.1 the time t for 10 oscillations so this time is this time is the time for 10 oscillations is measured for a pendulum of a length l shown here the period t period t of the pendulum is determined the procedure is then repeated for different lengths so not much issue in this so now in the next space what we have to do here is what we have to do here is uh, it says it is suggested that uh, T and L are related by the equation something like this so it's here uh, where G is the acceleration of free fall so T equal to 2 pi root L by G and G is the acceleration of free fall so a graph is plotted of T square on the Y axis here we have T but it says the graph has to be uh, has to have T square on the Y axis against L on the X axis so we have to have L on the X axis express the gradient in terms of g so we have to change the equation as if i square this thing i will have t square equal to 4 pi square l by g i can write it as 4 pi square by z then l so we have drawn t square in the y axis we have drawn l in the x axis so the remaining quantity should be equal to the slope which I have written as M it, I might write it M or G but here is M so this is the gradient and it's equal to 4 pi square by G so that scores one mark now we are given several values of small l and t so t is the uh, period for 10 oscillations so this some different values here and as you can see here uh, 90.0 that means the device can measure up to 0 0.1 uh, centimeter and here we have got 18.9 plus minus 0 0.1 so this is the uh, sensitivity of the or least count of the watch that is being used so calculate and record values of t and t square in figure 2.2 so we have to use t here t square here include the absolute uncertainties in t square so let's write the headings so it should be t t should be in seconds and we have t square it should be in second square so that scores one mark I suppose so uh, we have to record the values of t and t square so let's say use uh, t here and let's use a t square here and in t square you have to use absolute uncertainties so the the value that I can write for t square is determined by the value of the uncertainty so uh, but in t it's not the case so in t I can write freely the values so if I do this the values will be uh, somewhat like this uh, it is a time period for one oscillation so this divided by 10 gives this value so I can just write it like this so it would be 1.89 plus minus 0 0.01 0 01. Uh, it would be 1.79 plus minus 0 0.01 1.67 plus minus 0 0.01 1.55 plus minus 0 0.01 1.41 plus minus 0 
and 1.26 plus minus 0 0.01 so not much difficult in this case now the main issue is with t square so <coughs> for this we can make a, a derivation here to find the error of t square so that requires me to uh, use some uh, another uh, another copy here in the exam we have got uh, a blank page but here we don't have so that's why i'm using a different copy so let's calculate the value of error of t square so here what happens is so the fractional uncertainty here delta in t square by t square equal to it should be equal to 2 delta t by t so delta in t square by t square should be equal to 2 delta t by t because it's the rule for the fractional uncertainty and that gives us that gives us delta in t square is equal to 2 delta t by t into t square so this and this cuts so what I have is therefore delta in t square is equal to 2t delta t now if i do the same for the first for the first so this is for the first data i have got uh, delta in t square should be equal to 2 into t is 1.89 into 0 0.01 so this will give me if i do the calculations here 2 into 1.89 into 0 0.01 equal to this becomes this becomes 0 0.0378 now i have to use this uncertainty in one or two sf i repeat one or two sf so here what should i do i'll be using two sf it's because it will give me greater uh, precision in the error bars for example, if I have uh, that, uh, then I'll have a uh, uh, better value of the worst uh, slope and better value of the worst intercept as well with more precision. So that's why I'm using here 2SF. The rule is 1 or 2SF. 1 or 2SF, not more than that. So I'm using 2SF. And especially that is in the derived quantities, not here. So if you can argue, why is not, uh, why don't we have 2SF here? So it is according to the device that is being used and here we have the derived quantity something that is obtained from that so that's why i am using 2sf and something that is to be expressed in the graph so 2sf this is not to be expressed in the graph but this is to be expressed in the graph so that's why i am using 2sf for better precision in the graph that i draw so for that i have to round it up here so this becomes this becomes 0 0.038 so i write here plus minus 0 0.038 then let us go for t square so t square will be equal to 1.89 square so that is t square is equal to t square is equal to 3.55721 so where should i write up to so i must write up to that quantity so let us see the error has started from this decimal first place second place so if i look from here if i look from here the error has started from the second place after decimal so let's look here we have to write up to we can write only up to the second place of decimal and these two quantities have no meaning so i can write only up to this so i must have the quantity it is 3.5 7 so error starts from the second place after decimal we have to write the first first quantity only up to second place after decimal this thing cannot measure anything that is here we are not certain about the values at these places whether third place fourth place or anything else so that is to be remembered we can talk about this thing uh, sometime later but here let us, let us first finish the uh, table so if I do more and more calculations like this I have a ready-made uh, uh, table with me so that will give me that will give me so here it is a 3.20 plus minus 0 0.036 we have a 2.79 plus minus 
0.033 we have 2.40 plus minus 0.031 we have 1.99 plus minus 0.022 and we have 1.59 plus minus 0.02 so this is 28 I made a mistake here and this is to 5 so this is the complete table now the scoring is somewhat like this so this score one marks this whole thing scores one marks this scores one mark and this scores one mark